put us all on the map. Oh man, Pac Man. That's my boy right there, man. And he said, Naheem, did you ever think you would be on the same field as AP? And my answer was literally hell no. Nobody tell me what I ain't gonna be no more. Hey, even to this day, OJ don't want no problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, that's my dog, though, man. Real respect. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Cody, and it's your boy Will Richardson, and we're pleased to welcome you into another episode of the Sideline Story Podcast. Just a reminder that the Sideline Story Podcast is brought to you by TGK Athletics, uh, Maine's number one training facility, specializing in football and basketball for youth athletes. Log on to tgkathletics.com or download the TGK app for more info. So, Will, man, what's happening, my guy? Oh, uh, not much, dog. Uh, super sore. Camp started up. We back rolling. Uh, today actually was our first day uh, back in full pad. So, uh, we didn't hit the, hit the ground rolling, bro. Uh, feels good to be back, though, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, how's it feel to, to finally have on pads for, like, the first time and what feels like forever? Yeah, it's crazy, bro. Um, you know, we always talk about how it is for offensive linemen um, and how our job uh, requires you to have pads and, and helmets and stuff like that. So um, it's huge, bro. Um, it was it was definitely tough just going out there, strapping up. Like, I'm thinking I'm going out, like, about to go out with just helmets. I get out there, and I'm like, yo, I'm struggling to breathe a little bit. Like, so I had to loosen my pads up a little bit. It was a little tight. But, you know, uh, that Jacksonville heat different to all y'all who do not know. Uh, the Jacksonville heat down here in Florida is crazy. Uh, it's it'll say it's ninety one out, which is already bad, but it'll have a heat index of like one hundred eight, uh, humidity of ninety eight. So um, it's been tough, but um, I think the Jaguars and just uh, the NFLPA and the NFL collectively have have uh, done a great job of easing us back into things. You know, I feel like the biggest one of the big things coming into this season that a lot of players were worried about was that um, coming back period, uh, how would we come back into things? And I can honestly say that to today being the first day of full pads, it actually felt really good out there. Yeah, I know um, you talked to me earlier in the week. And you said you got some good feedback on your core test and, uh, and you know, some of your results, like your body fat percentage and all that. Talk, yeah. talk a little bit about that. Yeah, bro. Um, just, you know, like the biggest thing is, is like I didn't drop a ton of body fat, but I, I gained a lot of weight and a lot of muscle mass. So I dropped about three or four percent body fat, but I gained about 17, 18 pounds of muscle. So uh, it, it's been huge for me. And uh, actually, Dave Caldwell walked up to me today and he was just like, hey, man, I looked at your numbers and I see that like uh, your body comp is looking good. You put on a lot of muscle mass. So uh, that was one of the biggest things, as you know, Cody, for me this off season was to just uh, get stronger, bigger. And ultimately, it'll just help me out overall. If my job is going to make it easier for me. You're welcome, Dave Caldwell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, but everything's been smooth, though, bro. You know, um, the biggest thing for me going into this season was to get stronger. I did that. Um, and now it's just waiting to see how everything's going to play out with the season starting and the whole COVID. Um, I know everybody's been asking about how is the fans going to be, how many people are going to be able, uh, allowed to come to the games, what about family members and stuff, uh, and just let you all know that, I haven't even gotten a full uh, say so on that yet, so uh, still waiting around for that. But um, in the meantime, we're back in action. We're back working, uh, back around the guys, and just back doing what I love. Good stuff. Good stuff, man. I know uh, everybody's happy to hear that, and everybody's looking forward to a to a good season, a healthy season, of course. For sure. But without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce our next guest on the Sideline Story Podcast. This guy's been around the world. He's one of the top NBA trainers out there. He's trained some of the best players in the NBA, from Devin Booker, James Harden, Chris Paul, Kevin Durant, P.J. Tucker, you name it. He's trained them. He's been with them. He's built relationships with them. Mr. Irv Rowland. What's going on, guys? What's up, my guy? How you doing, my man? Uh, just first of all, I just like to say that uh, it's, it's, it's just a pleasure to have you on, my guy. Nah, I appreciate you guys having me, man. Taking the time to wrap it up with me. Yep, for sure, for sure. So, um, so Irv, like here on the sideline story, we always like to like start off with just how things have been going since COVID started off. So, um, just talk to us a little bit about how things have been going for you since COVID. I know it's been a struggle being at being an NBA trainer and you got a social distance, you got to do this and that. So, just give us a little run through on how things been for you. 
Terrible. Uh, <laughs> when the <laughs> shut down, I was in Russia. Um, so I rushed yeah. back, uh, came to, I live in LA, but I went to uh, Houston. I was living in a hotel for about four months, training a bunch of NBA guys um, but until they went to Orlando for the bubble. Um, so I did that. Um, they went back and I came back home to LA. Everything is shut down here. There's no gyms or anything open here so really just trying to figure it out man for sure for sure yeah I know that's tough uh being a trainer and just like you know the whole social distancing and like making sure you stay away from people it's really been hard uh even for me you know in the off season and stuff like that it's always been it was definitely a challenge just being able to get in a gym uh to move some iron was the biggest thing for me and uh I can just imagine as a trainer you got to have a gym to go to. You got to have a court to work on, let alone that. You got to have players that's really trying to come out and work out and stuff like that with all this stuff going on. So I feel it. Yeah. So, Irv, kind of talk to us a little bit, you know, about your journey, like how you got into the NBA world and into coaching and training. Like, how did that all start for you? Yes, I played at a Division two school in Oklahoma. And uh, going into my last year, my senior year of college, I met a coach uh, with the Boston Celtics at a camp. We developed a great relationship, and he promised me an internship when I graduated. So once I graduated, um, left Oklahoma, moved to Boston, and uh, spent a season there. Uh, left from there, went to the New Orleans Hornets, um, then the Hornets. Uh, was with them for five seasons, uh, left there. Went to Miami. I started a business training guys in the offseason in South Florida. Uh, so I did that for about three years. Then went to the Phoenix Suns for three years from uh, 2013 to 2016. And then most recently with the Rockets from 16 to 19. That's dope. That's super dope. So so you done been everywhere pretty much. You done trained them yeah. all. <laughs> That's dope, though. So yeah. like, so, go ahead, Cole. I was going to say, so talk about like, you know, working your way up. Yeah. Totem pole, you know, starting with, with Boston and like kind of how that started for you. Yeah. So my first year is crazy because back then uh, interns didn't, you didn't have to pay interns in the NBA. So I was an uh, unpaid intern. So I was working, working like 50 hour weeks for free. Um, so what I would do is I would work at a hotel from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. just to pay bills. Then after the season, they promised me that I was going to get a job. So I go home, everything's cool. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking I'm good. They're supposed to email me my contract or fax my contract. And then the owner's son's best friend needed a job. They gave him my job. So I left uh, Oklahoma, went back to Boston, you know, moved, went back to Oklahoma. I had to start from square one. Hurricane Katrina happens. The New Orleans Hornets have to move from New Orleans to Oklahoma City. Uh, for two seasons, and so I was blessed enough to get with those guys. It was Chris Paul's rookie year. Um, so I just did the video thing for five more years, and then what I would do in the summer, I would work for Tim Grover, Michael Jordan's old trainer in Chicago. I would work with him in the off season, and I slowly started to develop uh, my little training stuff. So I would start working guys out on the court, built that little rapport with guys, and then when I left New Orleans, I was able to move to Miami and build my business and um, start to get a bunch of guys to come down there and work out. And then that's kind of how I got started as a player development coach. That's dope. That's super dope. Yeah. That's like one of those things where like, you got to like love basketball. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like just can't get away from it. I know like with me, like regardless of what I'm doing around football, when I finish up mm -hmm. with football, I want to be involved with it in somehow, yeah. like somehow, some way, whether it's yeah. coaching kids or, being a trainer or whatever it is, you know, I'm trying to get my uh, my foot in in football, like, you know. Yeah. So I feel you for sure. But That's yeah, from, from, the, from the ground up, though, bro, I feel it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> from the sure. ground up, for sure. Yeah. I think what you said, Irv, kind of touches on, like, that old saying that it's not really, like, what you know. Like, who sometimes you know. it's who you know, like, Real. you know, and you had it on both ends, said, you know, you built a relationship. It got you in Boston. But because of something somebody else that somebody else knew, it kind of got you out of the door in Boston as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, yep, yep. And then uh, it was cra crazy. New Orleans and Boston were making a trade for Dan Dickow. And they were like, hold up, like, we need a video guy. Do y'all know of anybody? They were like, yeah, we got a guy to just spend a season with us. He just so happened to be from Oklahoma. 
and they had just moved there. So I interviewed, got in, and like I said, from there it was like it was over with. That's crazy. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we always be talking about that. Like that's all you got to do is just one connection, bro. And like it's like it's just meant to be, you know. Like one connection, one link between two people, and it's just like you know, like it really can change somebody's like life for real. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. Like, that's what I want to do with my platform. You know, is I want to get out there and just get connected with people while I'm still in football in the business side of things, you know, and uh, just taking use football as uh, my gateway out the door when I finish football, you know, because this stuff yeah. don't last for long. NBA or NFL, you know, it just it just ain't forever. Yeah, no, I tell kids that all the time, man. Use the sport. Don't let the sport use you. So because of basketball, I've been able to, you know, be around some really dope people, uh, obviously travel the world and do things that I never thought I'd be able to do because of the game. But, um, you know, there's all – a thousand different avenues we could take just through sport for sure for sure and uh you mentioned it um but this is probably like some of our most questions for you gonna come off of this but just talk about just some of the players just just start naming some of the players that you you you've coached in uh, and trained in the uh, nba work with lebron james uh james harden chris paul kyrie Irving, kevin durant you know pj tucker rudy gay trey young uh you know it's, it's a thousand guys man you know, building these relationships, building that trust has been huge for me. I'm actually at Trey Young's house right now um, in L.A. Uh, Word? That's crazy. Yeah. yeah so. Hey, tell him what's up. <laughs> <laughs> he said, tell him what's up. <laughs> They're downstairs watching the game, so I came upstairs to make the call. But, you know, developing these relationships and that rapport uh, with guys has, you know, been huge for me and allowed me, you know, to be able to continue to build my personal brand uh, with training and and I train a lot of kids as well. And so a lot of kids obviously look at it like, you know, you've trained this guy. So you got to halfway know what you're talking about. So mm-hmm. all of that's kind of played hand in hand. So um, Cody sent me this video today where you're just talking about James Harden. And um, you talk about how his step back sets him apart and how his step back is not like anybody else's and how he makes it so different. So when you train all these NBA guys, is your focus on them – training them separately, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, do you do you yeah. focus on certain areas with certain people, or, like, how does that work? Yeah, you know how it is being a professional athlete. Like, when you go to work out with your strength coach, for instance, right, when you're working with your strength coach with the team, because there are 53 of y'all or whatever, um, and so many, you know, linemen or whatever, it's hard for a strength coach to design an individual program for 53 guys. For sure. You know? So in a season, you kind of all doing pretty much the same workout. This group might be doing the same group workout, but it's pretty much, you know, not really tailored to that specific person. But then when you get in your off season, you get a guy that you work with and they tailor everything to your specific needs. You might do a test or you have some deficiencies here. We're going to build on this, whatever. And that's the same as a skill developer. When I'm working with a player, we're not just going through generic workouts if that was the case they just you know either go to their high school coach or had a uncle rebound for them or whatever so I'm trying to focus on you know watching film and what can what can this player do to add to his game that he already has to be a little bit better next season so for every player that's different um, James Harden handles the ball a lot so when I work with him you know, we're focused on a lot of isolation moves because that's the way he plays. A guy like P.J. Tucker, for instance, doesn't have the ball in his hand a lot. So you're trying to find different ways to tweak it for him to be, you know, more successful within what he does. So every player is different. Yeah, for sure. So same way as the NFL, like you said, uh, that's how it is. Yeah. For sure. So, Irv, kind of give our fans some insight. Like, what set, like, what do you think, sets James Harden apart, you know, and what is, like, going from six-man to either MVP or runner-up MVP every single year, what has, like, made him make this leap? Just the opportunity to run his own team, you know, like, being in Oklahoma City, KD was there, then Russ was there, so it was really no room for him to be the dominant ball handler that he is now. Um, But when he was there, even when he was six-man, he was their best pick and roll player. He was their best passer, but you just saw small doses of it because, you know, Russ and Katie had the ball so much. So then when he got to 
Houston was over his very first game, he exploded out the gate, and then they kind of saw, all right, cool, this guy is one of you know the next guys. <laughs> uh, but that's that's the thing. Like 